Coming up on BYU Football with Kalani Satake, the Blue Coats of BYU earn a victory in New England against UMass. Now they turn their attention to potential bowl eligibility and New Mexico State. We'll review and preview with the head ball coach next on BYU Football with Kalani Satake. Tied definitely. Waiting, waiting. Here's the pass. Touchdown! Cross to Luke. Luke on the sidelines at the 20. To the 50. Gonna go! Touchdown, BYU! Hadley middle. Sidestep. And left he goes. Touchdown, Cougars! Wilson downfield for Pau. And it is oh. caught at the 10 yard line! Wilson throws. Down and in. Shumway makes the catch. Going for the goal line. He's there. Touchdown! This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake. Presented by Intermountain Healthcare. And now, your host, Spencer Linton. Welcome on BYU TV and BYU Radio. We are live, your weekly VIP access to all things BYU football, as told by the man in charge, Kalani Satake. Hope you're enjoying this Tuesday evening. Great to have you with us. You can always join the conversation by submitting questions for tonight's guests using hashtag Satake Show on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and on the BYU TV sports accounts. And now, tonight's main event, fresh off win number five on the East Coast, no less, in his third season at the helm, head coach of the BYU football Cougars, Kalani Satake. Coach, congratulations again on win number five. Uh, your team successfully traversing the always tricky two-time zone <clears throat> East Coast road trip. It was an early game. How would you grade the overall performance by your team against UMass? Well, we got the win, and that was the, uh, the ultimate goal, you know. And we ran into some of the elements there, but I, I think uh, for the most part, just thankful that, that the coaches worked really hard and our, our players were ready for this game. We ran into some adversity early, and uh, they battled back, and uh, just really proud of the way the players played and, and uh, extremely happy that they executed game plan. It went really well. All right, let's review the highlights in moving picture format. BYU at UMass last Saturday from Foxborough and Gillette Stadium. The Minutemen got the scoring started early with eight minutes to go in the first quarter. They score a field goal, penalty aided, and then turnover aided. They get the ball back inside the 29. What's going through your mind right now, Coach? Well, tough start. I mean, it would have been nice to hold them to a field goal uh, in this in this position, but we made uh, a few mistakes and. Uh, it's just it's rough, you know, going down 10-0. But the guys didn't stop believing, and they kept playing. It was a good drive for us here. They bounce back right here. Specifically, Zach Wilson rips off a huge run inside the 30 of UMass. Later, setting up Talon Shumway for the first of his two touchdowns. What'd you like about this play? Yeah, Talon's a big target, and he's been uh, you know very athletic and. I think he's becoming one of, of uh, Zach's favorite guys to throw to. Matt Hadley, we'll hear more from him later today. Inside the red zone once again with BYU trailing 10-7. And then just before halftime, if some talent Shumway is good, more talent Shumway is better. Yeah, just give him the ball and, and he creates and good pass protection. Um, but really happy that they scored there. Final play of the half. Well, your BYU defense comes up big again. For whatever reason, the field goal defense has been amazing this year, Coach. Number one in the country right now with field goals missed by the opponents. Then Rhett Sandlin. Boy, did he have an afternoon. Three tackles for lost two sacks. Yeah, I'm just really happy with what he did and, and being able to give him some reps. And he made the most of them. And I think you'll, you'll see a little bit more of him uh, this next week as well. Some trickeration right here as Zach Wilson goes deep to Neil Powell. Highlight catch of the game, BYU up 14-10 and looking for more inside the red zone. Yeah, da dangerous throw, I mean, but, um, you know, just put it up where only Neil can catch it. And Neil made a great play. And, uh, you know, I, I think we had some success in the red zone, especially after the last two weeks. And it was nice to punch it in and get some, some touchdowns. And how about the vision of Matt Hadley right there on the cutback, 21-10 BYU. And Neil Powell was not done. Open again for a long game down the sideline, setting up a Levy Heathel on the jet sweep. We hadn't seen this for a while. It came back right here, Coach. Yeah, it was a good time. I, I, I liked what Coach Grimes did with the play call in the red zone and uh, changing it up. We did a lot of different runs. Um, you see a level here again on the end around and, and uh, just keeping them guessing. Played, uh, did a lot of different things, and I uh, was just really happy with the outcome. BYU wins 35-16 to move to 5-5 five and five on the season. Game stats presented by Nissan Intelligent Mobility. Now the most exciting tech you own is in your driveway. 388 total yards for BYU. 
and they rattle off at one point 35 consecutive points. Coach, anytime you have over 200 rush yards, that's been a very good sign for your team. Yeah, and then then on the other side, you know, I I really, I mean, defensively really happy with what they did. Uh, You know, we we had some opportunities to create some turnovers, but um, we'll we'll capitalize on make it work this week. But just happy with the overall team, all three phases. It was really difficult for Rhett to punt into the, it seemed like all his punts were into the wind, and um, he had one that that with the wind that he put inside the 20 and just uh, got, you know, I I think overall a good team win and just happy that that, uh, our guys played well and practiced well and, it showed it showed in the game. Yeah, let's talk about that turnaround from your BYU defense. Of course, you gave up the 10 points very early, but then you didn't give up any points on the next 10 UMass drives. What sparked the turnaround? I think it's just everybody's settling down and, and playing assignments on football. We had a, a couple of breakdowns in coverage and then um, a couple of missed assignments in the first drive. And the second drive, you know, I would like to have seen us respond better to a sudden change, but um, after that, it was pretty much locked down and, and against an offense that's been explosive and has put up a lot of points and yards on other people. And we held them to their lowest output. And um, that last drive that they scored on was, you know, we, we gave a lot of guys different uh, opportunities to play. And you saw Sione Takitaki run in to try to see if he can get a stop in there. And he actually was one of the guys that gave up a big play in it. So it didn't really work out with him jumping in there trying to save the day. So it had been nice for him to just let the younger guys and other guys get more experience, but I, I think that's okay. It's a good moment for them to play and, and try to get out of drives. I think that's, that it was worth the, the extra points. And you held UMass to season low in total yardage at 285. By the numbers, BYU features a top 35 defense in most major statistical categories, but you always want more. So what's the next step for your defense as a unit? Well, just be consistent. I, thought, I think defensively they've been playing really well. And um, going off of the game plan that our coaches are, are teaching and the technique and starting to buy into all of it, we're getting more guys on the field. You saw Rhett Sandlin and others that are, are playing a lot more. So we had a lot of young guys in the, in the in secondary with their, the injury to Chris Wilcox. And so guys are stepping up and they're, they're u- using as much of uh, their experience as they can to, 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 to uh, you know, just play and have fun. And uh, it's showing in the way that they're producing uh, in the numbers. But uh, being greedy, we can always do more, you know. So uh, I think that um, every week is it's it's, uh, it's another challenge, and this one would be another challenge in New Mexico State, being able to throw throw the ball around quite a bit. But um, you know, I, I was really pretty pleased with all three phases, and I know we're, we're talking about the defense now, but I think a good offense and. Uh, being able to sustain drives really helps the defense get rest and make adjustments on the sideline. Sure, and your BYU offense put up the second highest output in terms of points, 35 next to only the 49 you scored against Hawaii at home. Five touchdowns. Why was the offense so successful on Saturday after that shaky start? Well, I think they just executed. I mean, you look at um, not a lot of mistakes were made um, and, and uh, no false starts, no penalties. You know what I mean? It was a clean game good execution and then we we got the ball in the hands of our guys can make plays and uh, Matt Hadley has a great great vision same thing with the level um, and, and being able to trust him even after the fumble was mostly uh, you talked to level he'll say it was his fault but being able to trust him and, and keep giving him the ball you know I just uh, I think that that boosts his confidence and I think our guys are progressing every week and it's, it's good timing to progress into this New Mexico State week. All right, we are rolling right now. A programming note, your day-to-day BYU sports play-by-play happens on BYU Sports Nation with myself and co-host Jerem Jordan weekdays at noon Eastern, live on BYU TV and BYU Radio. When we come back, what's on the line this Saturday night with New Mexico State in town? Of course, it's senior night, so we'll preview it. And bowl game aspirations surrounding it. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake. BYU Football with Kalani Sitake is brought to you by Intermountain Healthcare, Healing for Life, and by Nissan, Innovation That Excites. There are some of the seniors that will play their final home game at Lavelle Edwards Stadium this Saturday on display. BYU Football with Kalani Sitake on BYU TV and BYU Radio rolls on from Studio C with a closer look at Saturday's game day schedule. Cougar pregame live starts at 8.15 Eastern. BYU TV's countdown to kickoff. Brand new edition live at 9 Eastern. The game kicks at 10.15 Eastern on ESPN2 and BYU Radio with postgame coverage on the radio and BYU TV after that. Basically, we have you covered 
from all angles. Coach, let's continue with what you've learned about New Mexico State over the past few days in your own personal film review and with your coaches. What do the Aggies do best? Well, they'll run the clock real quick and they'll throw the ball quite a bit. And they've used a number of quarterbacks, um, you know, and, and, um, but I think they're going to favor more of a spread uh, 10 personnel with four wideouts. They'll use a tight end occasionally, but for the most part, offensively, they're going to spread the ball and try to throw the ball quite a bit. On defense, they'll pressure quite a bit and they'll bring a lot of five man fire zone type of pressures. They'll play quarters behind it and, and uh, a good opportunity for our, our offense to make big plays if we can capitalize on on some of the risks that they take, but um, they're a good coach. I mean, they went to a bowl game, they broke the streak last year and got to a bowl game and beat Utah State in that bowl game. And, um, you know, I know that they have a lot of experience on the coaching staff, so we have to be ready. I, I know they'll play hard and we're expecting their best shot. We just need to make sure that ours shows up on Saturday night as well. Well, Saturday night also presents BYU with an opportunity to become bowl eligible, of course, after missing the postseason last year. How do you mentally balance the focus on the next game, the next opponent, New Mexico State, but also know that you're one win away from getting to kind of one of those major goal obstacles that you set way mm. back last year? Well, all we, care, all we care about is winning this game and keeping it focused on the one week at a time mentality. You know, the, uh, obviously our guys know what, what's going into it, but we only talk about uh, beating New Mexico State. We're not talking about anything else. Uh, we'll let... Tom Homo and the administration worry about the rest. And so you talk about bowl eligibility, ask me that next week in next week's ep episode, you know. That, and the, But right now, I'm not really worried about that. Just trying to you know, get this game. All right, I'm marking that down for Greg Rubel. Yeah, okay. we'll, we'll spend more on, on it next week if we can. <laughs> we'll hold off there. Yeah. Now, you said earlier this week a player never forgets his final home game. Yeah. In fact, your final home game was Lavelle Edwards' final home game when they named the stadium after him. What a special moment that was for you. Uh, with that in mind, you have several notable players that will uh, take the field for the final time at LES. What would the ideal scenario look like for all 25 of those guys when they play their final home game? Well, the first win, you know, and that, that's the, the, the first part. And, and then um, and that, that, that's all that really matters. After that, we'll just kind of figure it out as we go along. But... I'm um, just really proud of our guys and then um, looking forward to, to sending them on a high note and, and winning their final game in Lavelle Edwards Stadium, and that's, uh, that's the goal. So uh, there's a lot of great young men there that have really worked a lot and sacrificed quite a bit uh, for this program and this university, and so it would be nice to send them out with a win and, and do it the right way. All 25 players are being featured on BYU TV right now. We're showing the names. What advice do you have for these guys as they go into this last game? Well, they're great kids. I mean, I, I think most of them, they understand what it's all about, and they're grateful for their opportunity that they have. And uh, these guys, are, are I've been, it's been an honor being their head coach, you know, and I'm just excited to see them play uh, another game this week. And some of the guys are banged up, but um, for the most part, they're all part of this team, whether they're on the field or not. They have important roles. What do you remember most about your senior day game? I just remember because we weren't expecting it to be the called Lavelle Edwards Stadium. And then when that banner came up, we were really excited about it. And I don't remember much other than that we won the game and, and that I was excited that I was 1-0 as a player in Lavelle Edwards Stadium. But so I'm undefeated in that stadium as a player. So maybe I should suit up. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> Super Tuesday on BYU TV continues at the top of the hour. BYU men's basketball in game three of their young season. They'll host the Northwestern State Demons. TJ Haas led the way with 23 points for the Cougars Friday night in a crosstown rivalry clash, a win against Utah Valley. And Jasheer Hardnett set a new career high with 17 points a week ago at seventh ranked Nevada. As for the Demons, their guard, LaTerrence Reed, is putting up 15 points a game on 54% shooting this season. That game tips off at the top of the hour. As we head to break, a reminder that you can enjoy a full hot breakfast. Dinner Monday through Wednesday, a kitchen and a large grassy backyard along the Provo River Trail, all at the Residence Inn Marriott in Provo. Up next, the coach answers your questions in studio and from social media. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake.
Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Satake on a Super Tuesday. Let's recap some notable performances from Cougars in the NFL. Beginning with the New Orleans Saints' Swiss Army knife, Taysom Hill. He rushed four times for 24 yards and had a tackle in a Saints blowout win over the Bengals. Just your typical stat line from a quarterback. After visiting with the Cougars at Gillette Stadium on Saturday, Kyle Van Noy had 13 total tackles, five solo, and a Patriots loss at Tennessee the next day. One of Kyle's BYU linebacker brethren, Fred Warner, had four tackles, two pass deflections for the San Francisco 49ers and a Monday night loss to the New York Giants. And how about Daniel Sorensen of the Kansas City Chiefs making an impact upon his return from the injured reserve, had five tackles and a win over Arizona. This is always one of the more fun things to do with you coaches. Look back at guys you know well, some of them you coached directly. What do you think of the most recent NFL highlighted performances by uh, Cougars in the NFL? Well, that's really cool. And, and to have them around, you know, we got to see Kyle out there in Boston and, um, and, and he came and visited us before the game and the day before the hotel. And so it's just really nice to have those guys, all, all those guys that you just talked about um, on the screen where they're involved in our program. They come and work out. Daniel works out with the guys a lot in the summer. So you see them around and, and you saw Taysom here during the break when he had a bye earlier this year. So uh, it's just nice to have that camaraderie still with our guys. And, um, you know, just nice to see them doing performing well on Sundays. You know, in a perfect world, you would have the ability to spend as much time as you want, keep in contact with all these guys. But you got to worry about 100-plus guys on your current BYU football team. So how do you manage the time there uh, to try and, and keep that camaraderie alive? Oh, I mean, the, the, it's, it's the, the guys in the NFL and our alumni, everyone that, whether they're the NFL or not, they're, they're, they stay in touch with our players and, they're always welcome to come back to our facility and be involved with the team. And we have our flag bearers that run out quite a bit. And so we're, we're always um, being involved with our alumni and, and making sure that they know how much we care about them and the sacrifices that they've made on the field. We're, we're trying to make them proud of what, what we do on and off the field. All right, a reminder to use hashtag Satake Show on Twitter and comment on the BYU TV Sports Facebook and Instagram pages for a chance to see your question asked during our Q&A session, which... Just so happens to begin now here in Studio C. And we will go now to a social media question first, Coach. Angie Farns asks on Facebook, how much will we see the senior Tanner Mangum on Saturday? Well, I mean, ho- hopefully, you know, I don't think a lot of people know this, but the last couple of weeks he hasn't been 100%. And so I'm um, trying to overcome him. He got banged up a little bit a couple of weeks ago. And so... Uh, he's a lot better now and practicing um, 100% now. And, uh, you know, he's battling for playing time with, uh, with the others, with Jaron, and uh, we'll see how it works. But, yeah, the, I think he's, he's uh, back to uh, 100%, and that should help us. I think the whole goal is to try and get all those seniors some action yeah, at some Yeah, I mean, point. let's just win the game, you know, and, and, and I, I think if, if uh, we need to get those, those guys on the field, then we will, depending on injury or whatever the situation is in the game. But... Um, it's just nice to see Tanner 100% back, ready to, to go and practicing full in full strength. Betty Davis also asks on Facebook, you've asked for an aggressive offense a lot. Are you seeing what you want to see now? Yeah, but I mean, I, I think aggressive means there's, a, there's so many different definitions to it, and, and it could be, it's one of those things where it's a safe word for me to say as a coach because, like, yeah, go crazy. But um, in, in a stiff wind and in the conditions, it would be, I want them to be aggressive but smart, you know. So I need to add that into it too. Um, aggressive but smart because you, to be aggressive and, and just uh, not understand the conditions would be really foolish of us. So uh, as long as we win the game and uh, we can be aggressive and, and entertain the fans but then be smart, and uh, that would make things better. So we'll progress on that quote every day. Okay, aggressively smart. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah, no stupid mistakes. <laughs> it's a good formula to win football <laughs> games. Uh, please, no stupid mistakes. Yeah. All right. And be Break. aggressive. Yes. Get after it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's my speech. There Full we go. send. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Thank you, Coach. Wednesdays at 8 Eastern on BYU Radio. Get better acquainted with Cougars past and present on Behind the Mic, a weekly hour of in-depth conversation. This week, BYU men's basketball coach Dave Rose joins Greg Rebell for a full hour. Tomorrow, 8 Eastern, listen in on BYU Radio. Still on the way, senior running back Matt Hadley and his world of big changes, not just on the football field, 
It's all about life for him. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake. Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Satake live on BYU TV and BYU Radio presented by Intermountain Healthcare. A programming note, at the top of the hour, we go live to the Marriott Center where star forward Yoli Childs is warming up for the game after another double-double performance on Friday night against Utah Valley. And junior guard Zach Selyus shooting 44% from the three-point line through two games as a new starter. One of his opponents, Ishmael Lane, scored 24 points, pulled down 13 rebounds for the Demons against SMU. BYU men's basketball and Northwestern State live on BYU TV at the top of the hour. <laughs> Senior Matt Hadley has played a handful of positions at BYU, including safety, linebacker, and currently he's starring as a running back. Join with me now and welcome Matt Hadley to Studio C. <laughs> All right, Matt, you've known a lot of change over the past few years, perhaps none more stark than what you are experiencing now as a brand new father to a beautiful new baby. Uh, what's life like with a newborn in your home? Uh, it's tiring, um, <laughs> but no, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been wonderful, honestly. That's probably the best word to describe it. It's it's nothing like I could have imagined. I have a lot of siblings that have kids, so I've grown up with well, the past few years, I've been around a lot of my nieces and nephews, but uh, having your own is something special. You look at these pictures of your baby that we're putting on BYU TV right now, and uh, it's hard to describe the moment that uh, your child is born and, and the love that you feel and all of that, but you had to do this after a loss. So how, explain thanks. what that day was like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thanks for reminding me, Spencer. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it was, uh, I mean... Coach Satake is uh, probably the best. No, not probably. He is the best at reminding us um, that we, you know, after a win or a loss, especially after losses, you know, we take care of it in the locker room, and then when we get out, we need to be with our families. And, um, you know, that was just something that I, I've tried to put into practice. And so transitioning from the locker room uh, to my family and then being at the hospital right away, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was something I just needed to do, and yeah. Well, we're uh, pleased to have some of your family here with us. Uh, your mom, your, your beautiful baby Scotland is here, so it's great to have the Hadley clan here. Yeah, it's, it's good to see them. <laughs> you have a unique backdrop, including uh, growing up on a farm in Connell, Washington. How has that shaped you as not just a football player, but as an individual here at BYU? Oh, that's, uh, that's a great question. Um, you know, one that could probably, uh, we could probably sit for hours talking about, to be honest, because of all the experiences that, that I had. Um, you know, I think one thing that it, it taught me that really sticks out is, is just working hard. Um, and I think that I've tried to do that the best I can during my time here, whether it's in school or, or out on the football field. And, um, but, I, you know, it's something that I think will help me for the rest of my life. We already mentioned the several position changes uh, that you've gone through, most recently switching back to running back. What's been the most challenging part about kind of traversing all of those changes? Yeah, probably just uh, getting in a rhythm, I think, is probably one of the toughest things. Um, you know, going back and forth, the speed of the game is the same, uh, but finding a rhythm individually to, you know, be able to perform and on offense or on defense, I think, has probably been one of the toughest things. Coach, what have you seen from your senior Matt Hadley and his ability to transition from position to position and make an impact? Well, he's a great leader, but and part of that is he's just willing to do whatever it takes to help the team. And, uh, you know, he's uh, versatile and athletic. That's why we've asked him to play so many different positions. And, and um, But he's a team guy first, and he's a hard worker, one of the hardest workers I've ever been around. And so... I, I think we've asked him a, a lot of different challenges to play running back and to play safety and, run, and, and linebacker. And uh, he's a guy that can start a lot of different positions. Um, but he is 0 for 1 in passing. He, but he'll blame that on the wind. He'll blame it on the wind in that, the yeah, last game. But, that's the wind. No, but I mean, just extremely versatile and uh, just a great young man. And it's, um, it's an honor for me to be his coach. But I, you look at the way he handles things, and, and it's just a hard worker. And, and I, I love the fact that he's a great husband and great father and 
Um, just, just want to. He's been lucky. He, this is a second time senior night, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Because he had one last year, and then at the banquet we honored him and gave him a helmet and did the whole framing the jersey. We so, need another one of those. So right? he gets to get two of those, you know. <laughs> and so it's nice that he gets experience, experience senior night twice. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how many people have done that. So yet two blankets, two helmets, two jerseys, all that stuff. <laughs> Take it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and you're right. Not many uh, get to experience that. I can think of uh, one on top of my mind, Taysom Hill. Um, I do want to say this. We just looked at your stats. Not many guys are going to leave BYU football's program with multiple tackles for loss and multiple <laughs> touchdowns scored and multiple pass breakups and receptions. I mean, you've got an interesting stat line. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's 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 honestly it's been uh, an incredible experience. Um, you know, my five seasons here, and uh, I've I can truly say that I've loved every minute of it. There have been times where you might not have liked it uh, because it's it's hard, you know. But um, I really have loved it. What do you expect from this senior night compared to last year's? Uh, well. Um, you know, I'm hoping for a win that will spring us into being bowl eligible, I think, to be able to accomplish one of our goals that we've set. Um, you know, that's one thing that we didn't have the opportunity to do last year during senior night. And then, of course, just being able to be on the field, I think for me, um, that's going to be different <laughs> from, than from last year. So, yeah. All right. Already looking up compared to what happened last <laughs> yeah, year. Yeah, absolutely. The fact that you'll be playing. So, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a good start. Okay, let's go to some Q&A now, uh, Matt. And we have a studio question from uh, Brenton Farrell. Okay. How's it going? Hey. So looking back over your time here at BYU, what is one of your favorite moments that is not related to football or your son be being born, since that's a little too easy? Oh, um, good question. I think one of the one of the best experiences I had. So my wife ran track here, and uh, she made it to regionals, which is really tough to do in the triple jump. And so going to Texas to watch her compete uh, was probably one of the best experiences I've had here. It's fun. It's fun seeing that look in her eyes, like the same look that I, I get out on the field. And uh, yeah, it was it was a cool experience. All right, question number one from social media format. Jonathan Graham on Instagram asks, which side of the ball do you enjoy playing on more? Oh, um, <laughs> of course you look at coach. <coughs> yeah. I just like him on the field. <laughs> that doesn't really matter for me. <laughs> no, I, uh, I, I think um, well, that's a tough question. Uh, you know, I, I, I've come to love both sides of the ball. I think probably offense has slowly um, won my heart back over. Um, it had it when I was in high school for sure, but scoring uh, touchdowns will do that, Matt. It's fun, <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah. I would, I would say that. Brett Johnson asks on Facebook, "Would you rather change a baby's diaper or take <laughs> on a block from a blitzing linebacker?" <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> my wife in here still? <laughs> no, uh, I think I would rather probably change the diaper. To be honest, um, yeah, getting the, you know. Seven yard, a big guy getting a seven yard uh, head start at you isn't always the most enjoyable thing, but um, I'd probably change a diaper. Okay, okay, <laughs> I like the honesty. Check out BYU Sports Nation right now with Kiki Solano. It's the latest in Cougar Sports with a social media twist. Watch it right now on the BYU Sports Nation Facebook, IGTV, Twitter, and YouTube accounts. If you're looking for an even more convenient way to shop at Smith's, try Smith's Click List. Order online, pick up curbside at the store. Visit smithsfoodanddrug.com for details. After the break, BYU Offensive Coordinator Jeff Grimes joins the party in Studio C. How different is life coaching for BYU compared to playing against BYU? He's experienced both. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake. BYU Football with Kalani Satake is brought to you by... Intermountain Healthcare, healing for life. Take a good look at a few more of the seniors who will suit up at Lavelle Edwards Stadium for the final time on Saturday night. Super Tuesday continues on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Welcome back to Studio C. Use hashtag Satake Show on Twitter and comment on the BYU TV Sports Facebook and Instagram pages for a chance to see your question 
asked later this segment. Let's go ahead and make room for a third guest in his first season as offensive coordinator at BYU. He just led BYU to a five-touchdown winning performance at UMass and still rocking an elite mustache. Give it up for Jeff Grimes. All right, Coach, uh, in the oft-transient profession of coaching college football, your resume has become long and very impressive. Uh, And you've pointed out multiple times that the sacrifices of your family have played a large part in your growing success. So let's start there. How's your family doing and settling into their new home in Utah? Family's doing great. Really, really enjoy it here. Um, As my sweatshirt shows, uh, throwback here. I love uh, it. That I've been here before, and, and uh, our time here before uh, certainly made it really easy for us to come back. We're taking a look at your family, and uh, at, at the mustache thing we'll get to in just a bit, but, but clearly you're setting a precedent for your fellow coaches uh, with the ability to rock some facial I, hair. I, w- I was for some of the players, but <laughs> <laughs> they yeah. gave in. Matt's mustache is now gone. Yeah, yeah. To my he, wife about he, that. he had a really good one for a while. <laughs> uh, your mustache, in fact, has been the cause of some fun discussion and recently inspired a few Halloween costumes, my older brother included in that. Yet you're quick to credit J.D. Fossil for having the best mustache on the coaching staff. What made you come to that conclusion? I think if you compare the things that matter the most. Um, <laughs> Let's thickness, do that right now. <laughs> thickness, shape, and um, <laughs> how it conforms to your face, I think you've got to give J.D. the upper hand. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. You played college football at UTEP, uh, a strapping lad, no less, and you admittedly detested BYU when you played for the Miners of UTEP. What was it like to play for the Miners against BYU? No fun. Um, it was the only team in the conference that, that we never beat, and uh, every year uh, started, started the year dreaming of uh, the opportunity to, to win the game, um, but Never, never were able to do so. Oh, you're doing some good work here. We're spot shadowing you. Did you expect that we would find this when you um, came in today? No, I thought I had burned all this thing, <laughs> but I didn't think that it was still out there. But you can find anything nowadays if yes. you look hard enough, right? Yes, we can. All right, now to the football coach uh, that's actually being played today. How different is your offense uh, now compared to what it was in game one against Arizona? Uh, quite a bit different uh, for a number of reasons. Um, one, we had a number of guys injured that, that aren't with us anymore, and, and that affected our ability to play with multiple tight ends and do some of the things that some of those other guys were able to do early on. And obviously making a switch at quarterback um, brought a different skill set to us at that position. Um, and I think if you just if you look at um, the ways that, that we're moving the football now, it's, it's quite, a bit, quite a bit different. A lot less is happening prior to the snap, um, but more decisions being made post-snap. Matt, let me ask you this. Uh, the way that the offense is structured right now, do you like it more because it means you get the ball more? Uh, well, I mean, I, uh, I, you know, I would say that it's, I think it's definitely the right direction for us with who we have out on the field. I think it's been an awesome uh, transition for us, and I think as, as an offensive unit, we've really uh, taken it to heart. Coach, how would you assess the play of Matt Hadley after switching back again to running back and now taking a larger role? Um, outstanding. Just I, I feel really blessed to have him with us. Uh, you know, when we when we started the season, we we talked as coaches about our entire team, and you know, I credit Coach Satake and some of the defensive coaches uh, just for being open minded, and we we talked about everyone on our team and trying to put the right pieces into the right places. And um, I just asked the question if anyone felt like there was someone out there that could help us at running back. And um, Coach Lamb um, talked about how much he loves Matt. And, and I said, who? I didn't really know who that guy was back at the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that little kind of bowed up white kid? Yeah, I like him. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we brought him over. And, and uh, then, you know, he showed, he showed some flashes, but then couldn't stay healthy for a little while. And... Um, just didn't really have the opportunity, I think, to, to show what he had until, until later in the season. But what's been cool is he's shown up and, and played really well when we've needed him the most. And in addition to his playmaking ability on the field, I love what he brings to our offense. He brings some maturity to a really young 
group of players and, um, and some confidence and toughness that, quite honestly, we, we really have needed down the stretch. I've had a few people ask me what it's like to be on a headset as a member of a coaching staff. And I said, well, I haven't experienced it, but I can ask some guys that have done it. So for Coach Sataki and Coach Grimes, what's the game atmosphere like when you're on headset? Ex explain that to people that haven't experienced that. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. I mean, you okay. know, we we uh, we make a lot of decisions. I think during the week, we uh, you know, whether it's offense, defense, special teams, the, the play calls are kind of already set. You're just choosing what you think fit the best, and depending on what adjustments you have to make, or whether a guy's injured or banged up, or uh, what you're seeing from the defense or offense or special teams. So, uh, but I'm I'm really there to support them and. Um, and all the decisions that they make. And I have a lot of confidence in our coaching staff and in Grimey as an offensive coordinator who's done a great job leading that group and, and uh, establishing an offense that can change with uh, the personnel that we have. I mean, we had a lot of tight ends and fullbacks earlier, and those guys have been injured or different reasons that are not on the field. And, and um, now he's adjusting to what, the, what talent we have. And that's a huge compliment to what he's done as far as laying the foundation and being able to, to change as an offense, even though you have uh, you, we've gone from even in the gun more than under center. That's a hard transition, but it, was, it seems pretty easy for our offense. All right, Coach. I know you've called some plays from the booth recently. Do you have a preference to whether you're calling them in the booth or on the field? Um, depends which, which side of me is answering the question. My, my emotional side, I enjoy being on the field with the guys where I can put my hands on them and look them in the eyes and, and be there to, to challenge or encourage whatever's needed at the time. But when we went to this style of offense, there's a little bit more of a feel to the game than um, a more, more traditional huddle type of offense where you're picking more pre-snap plays, preset plays. So I think it's, it's, it's uh, best to be up in the box. All right, now time for some studio questions. Uh, the first in from Calvin Whaley. Uh, Coach. We saw some jet sweep success uh, this last week against Massachusetts. It seemed like it had kind of fallen out of favor in the middle part of the season. Where Was there something teams were doing to take the, the jet sweep out of the offense? And what was Massachusetts that you, got, that you saw that allowed you to have success with it again? That's a great question. We've used it in every game uh, to some extent, some more so than others. And I've always said we want to have the type of offense that's versatile enough to take advantage of what the defense is giving us. And in some games, defenses have worked really hard to take away the perimeter runs with wide edges or um, corners who are supporting the run from the outside. And so in those games, then you move to something else and you take, you take what they're giving you, so to speak. So in, in some games, um, we just haven't used, used it as much. Um, but the style of offense that we're playing now doesn't lend itself to quite as much of that as we were doing earlier. So it'll still it'll continue to be a part of our offense, just not quite as much as, as we were doing earlier in the season. Okay, thank you, Calvin. Thank you, Coach. Now a social media question. Rob Miller asks on Facebook, what's the hardest lesson you've learned this year as the offensive coordinator? Um, I don't know if there have been, if there have been any hard lessons. Um, I... I've been coaching for 25 years, and so I think I've kind of been prepared for this, and I've kind of been getting ready for it for a long time. But I, it's certainly been um, a learning experience for me, but it's been more um, a matter of learning my players and learning my staff and, and getting a better understanding of their skill sets and, and what each guy can bring to the table. And as the season has evolved, we've really tried to put guys in position where, where they can really excel and do what they do best. And so I think it's it's just learning to pay really close attention to, to the specific gifts that coaches and players have. Okay, next question in on social media from uh, at Tyler Thompson 96 on Twitter. This is for Kalani. Coach, one of my friends bailed on our group for the basketball game. Do you want a front row spot with us in the rock? <laughs> for tonight, I have to go to work, man. After this, we got to go back and, and watch practice and everything. But... Um, I will be there as soon as the season's done. I promise you. And I, I'm in better shape now for dancing. So I, can, <laughs> I, can, I can hang in there with the rock a little bit more than one half. Coach Grimes, can you <laughs> confirm Kalani's ability to dance? Absolutely, without question. And 
Um, he does it after most games. <laughs> do you do any dancing after games? <coughs> Only when forced to. <laughs> he did this last week. Oh, yeah. nice. It was awesome. It was oh, great to see yes. him dance. You know. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Mondays at 1 Eastern, we talk with the BYU football coordinators on Coordinator's Corner featuring Jeff Grimes, Eli Satuiaki, and Ed Lamb. Mark your calendars. Mondays, 1 Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. After the break, a preview of tonight's BYU basketball game. In fact, I think we should let the coach ask questions to our broadcast team as BYU football with Kalani Satake continues. Tristan Hodge, sophomore, offensive line, favorite movie, anything Marvel, favorite team, non-BR sports team, the Steelers, Buckler's place to go, Bora Bora, favorite music group, Red, favorite food, steak, would you rather sing or dance, sing, Beach and Mountains, Mountains, favorite TV show, Game of Thrones, favorite non-football hobby, hunting, favorite athlete, probably Merrill Hodge, 11, biggest fear, uh, spiders, uh, favorite superhero, Venom, Michael LeBron, LeBron, favorite coach, Pew. Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Sasaki on BYU TV and BYU Radio, presented by Intermountain Healthcare. BYU men's basketball preparing to host Northwestern State in just a few minutes at the Marriott Center. So let's go live to Dave McCann and Blaine Fowler courtside. Guys, what kind of matchup are we about to watch between the Cougars and Demons? Thank you, Spencer. Coach, good evening. We've been trying to get on Coach's show for 10 years now. Yeah, they won't <laughs> let us on. This is the first time ever. We had to have a basketball game just to get on. And I went to football practice today, but they didn't notice because I snuck in. That's right. That's right. Uh, hey, we're going to have a track meet here tonight. These, uh, the Demons are in town, and they're going to go at full speed. They, they substitute five at a time, kind of like how Coach does, does the defense. Also, 11 guys go out, 11 guys run off. That's what we're going to see tonight. Yeah, this, this is a, a, a basketball team in Northwestern State that wants to play with pace. The very athletic basketball team. And, and, and Coach McConaughey's reputation is, is one of the top scoring teams in the country every year. So as Dave mentioned, he'll sub five guys at a time. They want to press all over the floor. They want to turn you over. And they want to run up and down the floor. He'd like a score in the mid-80s, yeah. if not 90. It'll be fun. This is, a, this is a cool place, as Coach knows. I heard a moment ago he's confirmed he's going to come to the Rock uh, as soon as uh, after they beat Utah and win the bowl game. And so then that's good. So today we were talking to Dave Rose, and he was saying he wished they had more size, and he's concerned about rebounding because of that. Right. And he was making a pitch to get Corbin Kafusi back. Seemed like he was. He didn't say those exact words, but, but, but that's it seemed what, like that's what you was. and I interpreted it, because Corbin is yeah. the Gonzaga killer, and they need him back here. That's what, Coach, if you could get him in good shape, then he could come back over and play. Also, we did some research, and Zach Wilson was a two-year starter up at Corner Canyon playing basketball. 46 varsity games, skipped his senior year because he got done early and, and came to spring ball. So... If it doesn't work out <laughs> at quarterback, Zach could also come over here and play basketball. Absolutely. Yeah, we could definitely do some sharing. I, I think I could use uh, Zach to play, and Yoli could play be great, be great tight end for us. So I think Coach Rose and I will get together and, and uh, compare notes. So I'll, I'll loan him Corbin whenever he's ready for him. Gonzaga for sure. All right, are you guys? Kalani always has to answer your questions, so we're going to let him ask you guys a few questions. Kalani, well, first fire of all, away. Um, Blaine, I already asked the question, but Gavin already told me he's a better golfer than you are. And then okay. Dave, your tie, your tie game is really strong right now with that, <laughs> with that shirt. So you guys look great, and uh, just Thank have you, a great guys. night. I, I just want to know who's going to dunk the first ball tonight. Who's going to do what? Dunk. Who's going to oh, dunk gonna first? You know what? Yoli's going to get the first good dunk. But, but the, Baxter will get the one we remember. Yeah. Baxter, like the, the freshman return missionary, he's got a 7'3 wingspan and a 38-plus inch vertical jump, and it, he's ridiculous. We're going to see a lot of dunk highlights from Baxter before his career is over. Coach, let's talk about your basketball career. Uh, were you a church ball aficionado, or when did the game really come no, together I, I for played you? high school basketball, but I... I um, in my career, I've fouled more than I've scored points. So, uh, I, I've had more foul outs than, than uh, you can you can remember. <laughs> I'm not surprised you. No, there's a. Not surprised at all. Klein, a tough guy. And he likes the, he likes the physical part of the game. No, no hey. flopping with me. Yeah, it's real. Coach, 
Coach, we were there with you when you were announced as a new head coach at BYU, and we talked in the hallway afterwards, spent some time with your family. Uh, you're just the right man to be in charge of this football program. We're excited to get bowl eligible Saturday and, and get things going, but uh, it's been a pleasure to, uh, to hang out with you and uh, wish you the best of luck uh, moving forward in these next couple of weeks. Thank you, gentlemen. It's going to be a lot of fun. I had a lot of great memories in the Marriott Center as a young kid, as a fan, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing this team. I think, I think Coach Rose has done a great job. I have great athletes out there. Tell Zach to let it fly. I've never seen a three-pointer I didn't like. <laughs> hey, All right, guys. Thank you for being our warm-up band tonight. <laughs> Absolutely. The main event's ready to come take the stage. So we'll see you in about Thanks. six right. minutes. Go Cougs. All, All right. right. Dave McCann and Blaine Fowler, thank you guys, and thank you, Coach. That Let's was go fun. to the game. We should I, I do should more interviews. Just skip work and go to the game then. The Marriott Center will be uh, rocking in just a few minutes as BYU takes on Northwestern State coming up next on BYU TV and BYU Radio. BYU trying to get 2-1. and one. Up next on BYU Football with Kalani Satake, the final thoughts from the coach as his team prepares for senior night and what they hope is win number six. Stay with us. Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Satake, presented in part by Smith's Low Prices Market Fresh at Smith's. Kalani, this will mark a third senior night for you as the head coach. Not surprisingly, it's going to be emotional. What's your 10-second speech to all of those seniors? Well, just enjoy it. I, I, more than anything, I, the, the seniors will just tell the fans how much they love them. I think it's a good opportunity for us to see the fans again one last time this year with this senior class in, in Laval Edwards Stadium. And, We'll have a lot of fun, and, and we'll see what happens afterwards. Support your local troops. Thanks, Coach. See you next Tuesday at 80s from Six Mountain for our season finale of the show. For senior running back Matt Hadley, offensive coordinator Jeff Grimes, and the head coach Kalani Satake, I'm Spencer Linton. Watch basketball next.